hey, uh, what is that in the sky? Oh, that's a contrail. A contrail? What's a contrail? That's, you know, when the plane's going up in the sky and there's heat coming off of the jets, right? That exhaust, is, it's vaporizing. That's not a contrail. Those are chemtrails. That's waste being just released on us, and no one talks about it. Sure, there's people talking about it now. It is controversial, and people are starting to wake up right now, thank God. There's, you can see it. Where are we going to be 10 years from now? Where are we going to be 20 years from now? Is Are we really going to wake up and be like, that's got to stop? Whoever that is, they just got to stop that. Like Whatever deal was made, it's over. You got to stop that. Hello, hello, Hill Squad. Get ready for another great episode. So excited to be with you here today. We'll start with our quote of the day. Your heart serves as the compass for your actions, guiding you to do the right thing when your soul becomes lost. That is from Anthony William, our guest today, otherwise known as the medical medium. Guys, I'm so excited for this conversation. I loved talking to him and I learned so much. And when we talk about being the CEO of your health, he has the same message basically. And he has advanced information that's going to help all of us. And that is helping all of us. He's saving so many lives globally every day with his work. But um, today you're going to learn some really, really huge things. So If you haven't heard about The Medical Medium, he is the number one New York Times bestselling author. He is the originator of the global celery juice movement, host of The Medical Medium podcast. He was born with the unique ability to chat with the spirit of compassion and uh, get downloaded with information in the medical world for all of our benefit. He's sharing his gifts with us here today. He also has these new books, Brain Saver. Answers to brain inflammation, mental health, OCD, brain fog, neurological symptoms, addiction, anxiety, etc., etc. And then the Brain Saver protocols, cleanses, and recipes. I think it's a combined thousand pages here for your benefit. Um, and he has so many other books as well that are incredible. Today we're talking all about the things that are harming us in our everyday life, whether it's our fragrances our uh, candles at home, so many of those things that you need to know um, kind of what the what the ramifications are. And then also the huge mic drop moment today was talking about blood work and how detrimental blood work can be to us, especially if we're ill. You probably haven't heard this yet because I hadn't until I saw an Instagram post of his the other day. I had no idea that this is what was going on with blood work. And I am so grateful to him for knowing now. And you will be too when you listen to this. So have a listen to this episode. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for part two. And I hope you enjoy. So Anthony Anthony and I have just been chit-chatting before. But um, one of the things that I think is interesting, because we're talking about where to live, my naturopath and this doctor that I have just interviewed for this show that's going to air soon, all say LA and New York and Miami and even Chicago are some of the unhealthiest places to live. Mm. And that for true healing, I need to move towards the equator. Okay. And well, did you know the earth is flat too? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay <Just> so <laughs> no. <laughs> what is your take on all of that no i mean look you there's there's an energy on the earth and i i understand that as far as like the grid the earth the meridians just all of it and and there is something to say about all of that for sure i think that um you know if you're living in the mountains and you got a mountain spring running by and you're using an outhouse to go to bathroom and you know you're cooking instead of with gas you're cooking with you know some like pine that just was cut down on your property some old pine and you're barefoot and you're walking around stepping on just all the dirt and then you're growing your food and you're pulling weeds out which are really herbs, but you're pulling your weeds out and you're planting what you want to plant. You're eating it right there. And then the sun is setting and you're watching this most beautiful sunset. 
and you're like, whoa, and you hear the peepers and you hear the owls. And then you wake up in the morning and you see the deer walk across the property. You get up and you go down to the spring where it goes into a nice little kind of pond. You dip into it, you swim, and you're all excited. It's fantastic. You wake up, you're vibrant. You go back up to your little, you know, kind of like dwelling. Yeah, that would be incredible. I would love that. <laughs> but, you know, I would love that. That would be amazing. Uh, pamper me more <laughs> with fantasies of how amazing it would all be. But no, man, I got to live in the real world right now. And if I got to go to Chicago for some reason, I got to go to Chicago, whatever, you know. And but yeah, I get it. It's it's there's a bustle in L.A. There's a bustle in Chicago. There's a bustle in New York that can be toxic. Definitely. Definitely. You know, there's nightlife going all around. There's an energy going. There's a lot more smog coming out of the cars. There's a lot more, you know, noise that gets into your head. There's a lot, of course, it's unhealthy to live in some of these places. And the fragrances are insane off the chart, man. You're in Miami, just expect to be doused to death of perfume and cologne and aftershave <laughs> and all kinds of crap and shit in the air and fabric softener and detergents and uh, air fresheners and you name it. Just get doused in if you're in Miami. Forget it. You rent a car in Miami, you hop in that car, air fresheners, cologne, perfume, just suck it into your lungs. Yeah, it is unhealthy or unhealthier to city live in, you know, in, in the places that are around. And what would be incredible? Yeah. Be off the grid, be in the mountains somewhere, you know, and just freeze your ass off and just burn some wood, I guess, which isn't so great after all. But either way, yeah, there is healthier ways to live and the cities, you know, and the noise and the pollution and the garbage and the rats that are leaving all kinds of like lice and fleas and everything. Else. I mean, you know, it's just, yeah, it, it's rough. So, you know what? I'll hand it to your friend. Maybe it's not that healthy to live in, to, in some of these states and it's actually <laughs> or some of these cities and it's actually healthier to live somewhere else. I know. Well, when you were describing utopia, that's what my <laughs> my property in Connecticut feels like. That's how I feel. That's how I live when I'm there for the most part. I mean, obviously, we still have Wi-Fi, but it does feel like I'm super in nature and that feels really good. But, you know, like you said, we have to live in the real world. And so I feel like you know, I'll pop down to the equator for a period of time, let my body really rejuvenate, use those magnetic forces with the volcanoes and stuff to, to accelerate some healing. But when you are on an intense healing journey, like I have been, I think you have to consider some of those things because sometimes they say the environment that you got sick in isn't the environment you're going to get well in. I wonder what you think about that. I, I look at it this way, right? Our, our body can adapt it's got this powerful powerful ability to adapt and the world's getting shittier the chemtrails are dumping on us left and right out of the sky we're Wait, breathing in mercury can you tell me huh? what that is stop right like there all i keep hearing about is chemtrails <laughs> and now when i look at the sky anthony i see those planes and they have that white thing that comes from them yeah, all these yeah. years i just thought that that was a certain plane that emitted whatever is that what the chemtrails is mm. you're welcome i've been shooting my mouth off about chemtrails for 35 years it's like finally it caught on <laughs> no no just but yeah no what That's that what stuff that is, is it's just it's it's old airliners that have been gutted, tanks built inside of them, and then old old toxic waste that they that they can't dump into our oceans anymore because they'll kill the oceans too fast. They can't dump it on the land anymore because they'll be sued left and right by everybody who gets cancer. So all those chemicals and garbage and you know all that liquid old runoff that came from factories from the industries all around the world i'm talking about globally i'm not talking about just one place it's all then funneled into these airliners the airliners get put in the sky and they just drop it out because that's the best way to get rid of it you just thin it out up there on everybody and let everybody just breathe it in and let it fall into the oceans on a gradual level like that because you can't just take you know 750 trillion tons 
of waste right from the chemical industry you can't just take that waste and dump it all in one ocean area at one time because then it'll be this devastating disaster and everybody will actually see it and they'll be like what the hell just happened but no it's got to go into planes and then it's just got to get dumped on us wherever and whenever all around the planet and we just sit there and we just look at it like you know hey uh what is that in the sky oh that's a contrail a contrail? What's a contrail? That's, you know, when the plane's going up in the sky and there's heat coming off of the jets, right? That exhaust, is, it's vaporizing. That's not a contrail. Those are chemtrails. That's waste being just released on us and no one talks about it. Sure, there's people talking about it now. It is controversial and people are starting to wake up right now. Thank God. There's, you can see it. Where are we going to be 10 years from now? Where are we going to be 20 years from now? Is Are we really going to wake up and be like, that's got to stop? Whoever that is, they just got to stop that. Like whatever deal was made, it's over. You got to stop that. Because it's obviously a deal because nothing's done without money. I'm sorry. Nothing is done on this evil, despicable, dirty, nasty planet without money. That's what this planet is. It's planet money. That's how this earth rolls. And so... What's happening up there, you see all those planes. Those planes are like old airliners from 60 years ago, 70 years ago, and even from 20 years ago, right? The retired airliners. And they're all up there. They used to be commercial airliners. But there's nobody sitting in the seats. The, the, the things have been gutted. There's tanks in there. There's no passengers in those seats. Those planes are sitting there with one pilot. The pilot's sitting there flying it, and the pilot just hits a switch. He's just told to hit a switch and he just hits a switch and lets the stuff out. It just wow. gets blown out. And then he shuts the switch off. And then he goes another, you know, 300 miles and he hits the switch and he just blows another round of it. And they go zigzag. They make X's in the sky, you know, six, 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 you know, evil, six, 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 demonic stuff. It's they like, do? well, all you see is X's everywhere. Just look at the chemtrails. It's X's, 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 right? And it's really like it, talking about spiritual energy, talking about like all of that. You look up the sky and you see X's everywhere in the sky. I've never seen That's X's. not hugs and kisses. That's not hugs and kisses. Here is all this chemical being dropped on us. And that's not a hug and kiss sign up there. Those are X's. Those are the chemtrails just crossing each other constantly. And everybody looks at it and goes, oh, how nice. Honey, look at the sky today. It's nothing but a blurry, foggy mess you know, blowing out of, you know, these planes. And it, it's like, well, yeah, where are we going to be 10 years from now? Is someone going to wake up and be like, okay, we just have to stop that. Yeah. Whatever that is, that just has to stop. But you know what? The world doesn't work like that either. So <laughs> it will go on and go on. And here's the thing. <clears throat> it's all byproduct from 100 years of chemical industries worldwide. It's all byproduct. And it's just because they got nowhere to put it anymore. See, they used to be in the 1960s. They started chemtrails in the, in the 19, late 1960s. In the early 1960s, guess where all the chemicals went? Just straight off into the rivers, right into the Mississippi mud, right into all the different rivers. It just went in everything, right? You know, all the way across the world and everywhere. Europe, you name it. Doesn't matter what country, doesn't matter what continent. It all ran off into rivers, it went into ponds, it went into lakes, and it went into the oceans, right? And then it went into landfills. They can't do it anymore. In the 1960s, they had to stop because they were killing everything. The oceans were gnarly at that point because they were filling it, right? So they had to figure out a plan, and that plan was, let's just get it in the planes, let's get it up in the air, and just thin it out, just wisp it out over time. And, you know, it's like, there you go. And that's, that's the world we live in. Well, that's depressing. Um, <laughs> you know, well, because also, as I've been kind of deep diving on different things, like I think it was in the 50s that the um, the vaccine for, oh gosh, polio came out and they found out that it had SV40 in it, but they still sent it out to everybody and distributed it. And SV40 causes cancer. And you just think of what's happened since the 50s and how many cancer institutions have opened and how much cancer there is. And you wonder, you wonder why when our air, water, food, and our medical is polluted, everything's polluted. 
So well, it's death by a thousand cuts. That's all it is. Yeah, it's like there. It's everywhere. It's everything. You name it. It's not just like fast food, you know. Like all these years, when I hear that, it's like fast food is why we're sick. I'm like, dude, that's not why we're sick. I'm sorry, that's not why we're sick. It's <laughs> it's, it's like fast food. It's fast something, food. But... It's yeah, it's something, and it's not good. But all just all you would hear, like over the years, like that person's sick because anybody who's into health is like that person's sick because of fast food, fried, greasy food. It's like, dude, you're off the mark. Yeah, it's not good for you. Yeah, it doesn't help. Yeah, you'll get some weight gain. Yeah, you'll get some diet type 2 diabetes. Yeah, you'll get some, you know, some cholesterol buildup or you'll get plaque in in the arteries, right? That's what you'll get. And okay, sure. But no, it's way more than that. It's like death by a thousand cuts everywhere. Fragrances is where they're hitting us hard now. Like people don't realize it. That's a big one. And I've been talking about that. I published material about it. I did lectures about it over the years. It's the fragrance thing is finally now. I've, I've got it. I pushed it out there enough. And, and then when the pandemic happened, everybody bought the scented candles. It's like mm-hmm. every single thing you saw on social media was somebody lighting scented candles. It's like, I'm here today to talk to you about what I did today and what I ate. And you see five scented candles burning in the back. It's like the scent, scented candle just blew up because the pandemic. And meanwhile, it's like, I'm eating really good. I'm taking care of myself. I'm exercising. And by the way, I'm putting these dangerous chemicals right into my lungs right here with these scented candles. It's, we're getting like, it's death by a thousand cuts on every angle. It's not just fast food. It's fragrances. It's scented candles, air fresheners, perfumes, clones. It's all the, you know, the dryer dust. It's, it's, that's just a, some of it. And then there's the pathogens, the low-grade viral infections everybody's walking around with, and the low-grade bacterial infections everybody's walking around with. And where that's are those there. coming from? Oh, man. Well, those have been, they've been released throughout the last hundred years. All the different streps, and then, this, and then all the different Epstein bars, and then the mutations and the different strains of HHV6 and the shingles and a cytomegalovirus and the HSV1, all of them just that's in everybody. So that's chipping away at people. And then the toxic heavy metals. Everybody's got metals, everybody. And they get them from all different sources. They get them from ink. They get them from the tattoos they get, even though they're told now, well, You know, our ink and our tattoo parlor is vegan and it's animal cruelty free and it doesn't have any metals in it. No, of course it has metals in it. That's why you're able to see the ink when it's in your arm. That's soft metals. (laughs) Those are soft metals and hard metals. And that's the light hitting your arm through your skin and reflecting off of the metal. That's how you actually get a picture on your body. Wow. But the point is we get metal from all kinds of sources right now and where else that's it yeah where else it's not just aluminum foil it's not just drinking out of soda cans because the liner in the soda soda can actually cracks you know that liner they put in soda cans so no more perrier you know it's like yeah i mean in a can it's people think well wait a minute i'm not drinking really out of an aluminum can because there's this liner now poxy that's in the can protecting the aluminum from getting into my beverage, but that's not true. The can heats up in the sun. When you're standing there, it expands. The poxy actually all of a sudden starts to break down. If you stick it in the refrigerator, it retracts. The poxy starts to to shrink. And what happens is you just get, you're always getting aluminum in different places. You're getting mercury in different places, fish, fish oil for years. It's like, well, I don't take fish oil anymore, but you took it for 10 years. Wait, fish oil is bad? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm on Definitely. a cod. No, I'm on cod liver oil. Is that bad? Oh, that's the worst. What? It's the worst out of all the fish oil. What? If you're somebody that's like, I have to be on some kind of fish oil and some kind of just be on krill oil then, you know, if you're just, but yeah, cod liver oil is the worst one. What does it do? It's just, it's got metals in it. They just can't get the metals out. <gasps> it's just, you can't get them out of there. It's you can try so then it's to in remove the fish we're eating. Yeah, but the fish oils are worse because it concentrates it. No, I'm it's saying different. the fish that we're eating has it then. Yeah, but but if you eat a fish, you're not getting that same concentration levels of 
oil that they're manufacturing when they're actually creating a fish oil. There's a huge difference right there. Like if if I, I would rather eat a fish any day than have a, a fish oil supplement Got any it. day. And because this, this- the whole knowledge of, let's say, even specifically the cod liver oil, that's been downloaded to you. That's something that you have, because that's how you get your all of your messages, right? You're downloaded. Well, yeah. I mean, how else will I know, would I know that Epstein-Barr creates multiple sclerosis? And then eight years later, they come out with the information. How else would I know that life expectancy was dropping and they just decided that it's dropping now? You know, how else, you know, would I know these things? because it's information that comes above from above yeah but but the cod liver oil it's the thing is with that is is they do this process where they try to remove metals out of a lot of different fish oils and when they do that process it makes the metal change it's like a homeopathic version so if you take something out of say like say you're trying to create something an infusion say you're trying to create a homeopathic um, tonic or anything like that. The, with the more you remove and dilute, the stronger it has an effect on the body in a different way. So when you remove mercury from fish oil, you're left with me- like a homeopathic version of methyl mercury. Its imprint is still there. It easily travels to the brain and travels to other areas of the body that it wouldn't travel to normally if it was just in a fish, if you ate a fish and there was mercury in that fish. Be a big difference there than the fish oil supplements. And I've been talking about this for years, so I don't like those. And here's the thing with fish oil supplements. Most of the fish oil factories that make this manufacturing they're throwing every single fish in there, mixing it up, mulching it up. It's like, oh, what did we get today? Oh, a whole bunch of, of haddock. What did we get today? A whole bunch of, you know, cod. What did we get today? A whole bunch of mackerel. Whatever it is, they're munching up all these different heads and tails. It's the garbage disposal part of the business. That's what the fish oil business is. Mm, sounds like they dog They get food. loads and loads. Yeah, they get loads and loads of fish parts, heads and tails and fins <laughs> And they get, you know, and they're just throwing them all together. Flounders, uh, blowfish, whatever the heck's from the industry. And they're just, it's all going together and just being mulched up and, you know, compressed. And that's our fish oil that we get. It, a lot of manufacturing. And I'm not saying every single one does that because someone's going to be like, that medical medium's wrong. In our fish factory, we don't uh-huh. do it that way. But the majority <laughs> is, is how they do it. I've so been then talking if about you, if you're on it, you should just yeah. do more fish. Yeah, I mean, that would be your if that's what you want to do. That's your best thing. You know, I've been I published this years ago and, and now finally science is talking about it now. I think science is just starting to come out with articles recently on how fish oil is. Hey, it turns out fish oil might not be good for us. <laughs> and, you know, they have that they're coming out with yeah. that now. So you'll see the next couple of years, a whole attack on fish oil coming out soon, but I've already published it years ago. I've been talking about it forever, but you'll see it's coming out soon. So Um, basically we all have to lock ourselves in for about two weeks, read every single letter and word you've written and then go from there. (laughs) You're going to need, going to need more than two weeks. (laughs) But yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, I thought I'm pretty good at reading fast. and, (laughs) And then, and then you get like, yeah. And you'll, and look, if you like the information, you like it. If you don't like it, then, you know, move on. Right. And, but it's there for you. And what you'll see is it's ahead of its time. It's, it's not because I'm a smart guy. I've said that a million times. It's not it. It's where I get my information from, but the fish oil thing, you're going to see a huge blowback on fish oil soon. Huge. And everybody's going to be freaking the crap out. You're just going to be freaking out. Like I've been taking fish oil forever. What the heck? I've been told by my doctors how good it is for me. I read 20 million articles about it. And, you know, the brain specialist that's out there on the Internet all the time, he talks about it. It's in all his videos. And then here it comes, the shocker. It's terrible for you, man. It's terrible. And I forewarned forewarned my people anyway throughout the years, anybody who's gotten the books and have seen my lectures, whatever, but 
it, there's only so much you could do. It's like the fragrance thing. I spent decades trying to tell people about these fragrances and now finally it's starting to take off. But the big one coming, I'm going to be, I'm going to just say this now, is getting your blood test and blood draw. That's the big one that's coming soon. I saw your Instagram about that. Explain to everybody what you mean by that. Okay, so, so medical meme information um, exposed the blood draw problem that we have in this country and worldwide. What that means is that when you go to the doctor or a phlebotomist draws your blood, they take too much. Mm -hmm. And then they throw it all away. Or they use it for something else. Depending where you are in the world, they use it for something else or someplace else. It, it either gets sold. Um, it either yeah gets used for experimental testing. And for sure, I know that at least most of it just gets thrown away, meaning like depending on where you are on the planet. But here's the thing about it. They take too much. They can if someone was murdered and they were thrown in a shallow grave like 50 years ago. And they found the body. They can take a drop of blood that was on a pair of jeans in that grave and they can test and find so many things. They could run so many different tests with that drop of blood. And what people don't realize is they don't need full vials of blood like they take. So they'll take like a full vial here, another seven full vials. You're pregnant? Hey, let's just take Mrs. Jones. Let's just take seven more vials out of, out of you while you're pregnant. That can put a baby into mild hemorrhagic shock. So your baby's trying to recover every time you get this blood drawn. It's one of the most dastardly negligence or, or just complete mistake made by the industry. If you're sick, a specialist will take 20 vials, 30 vials, 40 vials. But here's where the problem is. The problem is we get sicker and we get thrown into flares and we get relapses because we're getting too much blood drawn. And here's where it gets lethal. There are people dying all around this planet from blood draws and don't even realize. What? Their families don't realize they died from it because they got sicker and sicker and sicker until literally they were bled to death and they were succumbed to their illness. Because what happens is, okay, I just had 27 vials drawn from my functional medicine doctor specialist and now I'm bedridden for three straight weeks, can't function, and they're worried about me, so they're demanding I go in for another 20 vials. It is, it is a death sentence for a lot of people in the chronic illness world. The sicker you get, the more blood they take. The sicker you get, the more blood they take. If you're not strong and you, and you aren't that sick, you can handle that ride for a while. But if you're really sick, you're bedridden, and you've been to specialist after specialist, and you've got neurological problems, and you're really struggling, they will bleed you to death. Seven more vials, 10 more vials. Okay, we better send you to another specialist because we don't know why you can't walk now. Another 20 vials. Maybe you have Lyme disease. Oh, okay. Well, a specialist will draw 40 vials of blood for a Lyme patient. They did that all these years. And they put, they put so many women into their beds permanently. Permanently. Thousands upon thousands of women were literally bedridden from blood draw because the reason why is most of your immune system happens to be in your bloodstream i know that the functional doctors the alternative doctors the naturopathic doctors even the mainstream doctors want to say your immune system's all in your gut it's all in your gut it's not all in your gut a big part of it's in your gut the majority of your immune system is in every organ in the blood, every blood vessel, it's in your blood. That's how they can check your immune system when they draw blood from you. That's where most of your immune system is. Your lymphatic system isn't your gut. See, there's a large part of your immune system that's in your lymphatic system. 
that's not your gut. That's not inside your intestinal tract. That's not inside your stomach. People don't realize the majority of your immune system is in your bloodstream and then a big hunk of it's in your lymphatic system. And what happens is, why are you sick to begin with? Because you have immune system problems. You're sick because you've got chronic fatigue syndrome of immune system problem. You got autoimmune, an immune system problem. You got POTS, you got RA, you got fibromyalgia, you got Lyme disease, you got something, you have an immune system problem. And then we're getting blood taken from us constantly and we're having our immune system removed. Hunks of it that you can't get back fast. There's no way of retrieving that back. Your bones have to go into overdrive to produce immune cells. And when you're sick and you got all these problems and you're not doing well and your bones have to go into overdrive and try to mass produce in a crisis state level, like immune cells, then we even drain faster and faster. And this isn't just all. A big part of our blood system, we got the electrolytes. We got critical soft minerals that are critical, you know, macro minerals, trace minerals that have to get to our brain every day. And when you remove it from blood work, it throws people into bad depression. I can't tell you how many people after blood work, five vials, seven vials, 10 vials, they go into a, a downward spiral with their depression, their OCD, their anxiety. Now they're suffering again. They were already suffering before. And then right when they start to recover two months later, they're coming out of it. They're seeing the psychiatrist over and over again. They're seeing your therapist. They went to their doctor again. They say, well, it's time to get more blood work. They get seven more vials to see if they have nutritional, to look at their nutritional panel, to look at their thyroid panel. They get seven more vials, Maria. And then they're in, in the spiral again, severe depression, severe anxiety, because so many critical trace minerals and electrolytes were removed out of their blood when they're already hanging in there by a thread. I, I can go on about pregnant women in their blood test tested. I could go on about blood donations, donating blood. I can go on. I mean, they, they give you a chocolate chip cookie and a tiny little cup of apple juice after they removed <laughs> Unreal. Enough blood to put many people into hemorrhagic shock. That's why people faint. What that is, is hemorrhagic shock. That's why you feel faint. And so, okay, I'll have that little one ounce cup of apple juice. Thank you. I just gave you a huge part of my blood system amount and I'll be on my way. Oop, I just tripped and fell into the gutter outside. Let me just go home and try to like heal for the next six months. Here's the problem. When you get blood work, it can take six months to restore that blood because water doesn't restore your blood. Oh, just drink a bunch of water. That's not blood you're drinking. That's just water you're drinking. Your body has to produce, has to create blood out of that water. And that takes time for a lot of people who are sick and they're run down and they're weakened. They're at their doctor's office because they have a problem. They're sick. And then they're getting too much blood drawn and they're getting more deficient. Here's something interesting. I know I'm, I'm running. I'm, I know I'm running this into some time here, but can I just say this? People go to get a nutritional profile. They want to see what's going on. Do I have nutritional deficiencies? Am I nutritional deficient? So they get blood work. Their doctor looks at their blood when it comes back. Oh, you're low in vitamin D. You're low in calcium. You're low in this. You've got nutrient deficiency here. But if they took your blood work after they took your blood work, it yeah. would be an entirely different story. <laughs> it would be it would be the scariest freaking thing any doctor has ever seen. But they don't do that. No one's ever done that. So let's take some blood out of you and let's ship it off to the lab. Find out what kind of nutritional deficiencies. And then come back to me tomorrow and we're going to do it all over again. And we're going to ship it off to the lab and get some deficiencies looked at. And you'll see the first one shows this much deficiency, this much deficiency. Oh, by the way, this is okay. Your B12 looks okay. You know, your vitamin D is a little low. And then the day later, after they draw, drew all that blood, if they looked at that panel, it would be like a crisis state. It would be like, whoa, what just happened here? You like you're flatlining on nutritional deficiencies. This is insane right here. 
but they don't see that. So you wait another six months to get your nutritional deficiencies checked and you're just trying to build them back up again to get ready for your next getting screwed over session at the doctor's office. Now, I'm not against blood tests. I tell people to go to their doctor and get blood work, but it's about doing it right. It's about teaching the doctors and teach us what I do and teaching the phlebotomist and teaching the lab technicians. You don't need as much blood. They only need a drop. So how do you manage okay. that though? Like, obviously my two questions are going to be, yeah. how do we replenish? Cause we all have yeah. to get our blood work done, but yeah. How do you go to Quest Diagnostics, for example? I'll go there to do my blood work for my naturopath. How do yeah. you go to them and say, I'm only going to give you two vials? Like, can you do that? Yeah, you can. And you can go there and say, only fill them halfway. You can say, only fill them quarter way. And know what they'll say? They'll say, well, I don't know, uh, Maria. I, I'm sorry, Maria, but we can't really get the results we're going to get from just a quarter vial. That's not true. It's a lie. Just be strong and be like, uh, you're getting a quarter vial or you're not getting any at all. And they'll give you all the panels you ever wanted. Wow. All the panels you ever wanted because the system's broken. No one fixed yeah. it. And this is another piece of advanced information from medical medium. It comes, yes, it comes from the voice I hear. People can laugh all they want, but it's been proven time and time. And what you're going to see coming up, you're going to see a blowback on blood work because of the medical medium coming up. I have about how bad it's been and about how we've been wronged so bad for so long. Is it a mistake made by accident? Is it on purpose? Why are they doing this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody who's doubting this right now, they can get a full thyroid panel on a baby, but they don't take seven large vials of adult blood from a baby to get that thyroid panel. Good point. They only need a little speck of blood to get everything they want from that baby. It's a sham. It's a scam. You're being screwed over, but there's a reason for it. They want your blood. Mm -hmm. Somebody wants it. It's not the phlebotomist that they don't know anything. They don't want your, they're not stealing your blood. It's not the doctor. The doctor's just been told this is how the system works. But somebody somewhere up in the upper echelon of planet darkness has this system set up just right so they can draw millions upon hundreds of millions upon hundreds of millions of gallons of blood from the human race. And it's going somewhere or they're just throwing it all down the drain out of stupidity. It's one or the other. Simple as that. Either way, we're getting to, sicker because of it. And, we're getting sicker because of this. And the and, system is broken in so many ways, but I've never until I saw your post recently heard about the blood thing and um i am so grateful because i will go in and demand they only take a quarter per vial you should and you can do it this way if you're if your doctor says say you're somebody out there and your doctor says no we're not going to do that we, we want all the blood then you say well then just take one full vial today and i'll come back in two weeks and give you another full vial or the most i'll give you two full vials and then when do you want me back for two more full vials? Mm -hmm. You have to look out for yourself. Well, I'll tell you something you interesting that I just thought of. When I've done blood work, I have left and then we've thought of something and my doctor will say, oh, I can just add that with the blood that we have. Oh, I'll add yes. that test with the blood we have. Yes. So he because adds tests, like he adds them on and I'm saying he's added multiple be, without having to take more blood. Because it's bullshit. Because wow. it's bullshit. This is wow. one of the biggest, biggest, I would say, <clears throat> I don't know. It's one of the biggest mess ups on the planet, really. And the alternative industry has no idea. Conventional industry has no idea in health. None of them know. And it takes a guy, a medium, to have to expose it when... You know, it's it's ridiculous. It wow. shouldn't have to take me, a guy who's uneducated, even though I've written eight medical books that have saved mm. millions of people's lives around the planet. It shouldn't take a guy like me that never went to, you know, university, never went to, you know, never took courses in, in the sense of like, you know, studied with people and all that stuff. It shouldn't take, it shouldn't take me, you know, to actually come up with this. 
It just it should be obvious. Well, but it's it's not. So how do you replenish? Is there is there a protocol that you have for us to replenish our blood after blood work? There, there, there is. It's incredible. I mean, it's in the Brain Saver books. Anybody who has the Brain Saver so books, so this is your they'll, new book. Learn about it, everybody. Yeah. It's called the Brain Saver. I have it right here. Yeah. It's massive. It's, it's a medical book of incredible information. I wrote a comprehensive chapter about blood draw. That's all you need to know. Just get the book. You don't even have to buy the book. Go to the library and say, I want that Brain Saver book and just take it out of the library for free and find that blood draw chapter. And then you can find in the protocols all these different things you can do. There's two books. There's a protocols book and there's the Brain Saver book. Got but the Brain here. Saver book has all that right there. there yeah, there's go. the other protocols book. Yeah. <laughs> these things are massive. They're so yeah. heavy. Um, so before we move on to the next topic, I do have to mention some of our supporters who are so incredible and help us keep the lights on here. So first of all, Macy's guys, I've told you about their free personal stylist program. It's incredible. You can have a personal stylist help you with whatever it is you're looking for. If it's a look for a wedding, um, or you're going on a hot date in Miami, I don't know, whatever you're doing, um, their personal stylist will help you put together an outfit or even a whole new look for yourself. If you go to macy's.com forward slash personal stylist, um, you can check that out. Maybe you'll pull from their new brand on 34th, which has some really bright colored, fun, festive things. Um, also Just Thrive. I've been using Just Thrive for a few months now with really incredible results. Their probiotic has been a game changer for me, just calm as well. So just thrive dot com or just thrive health.com excuse me if you use the promo code heal squad you can get 20 percent off your first 90 day bottle of just calm and just thrive probiotic today take control of your constipation your bloat your gas all of those things live your healthiest life use the heal squad code at just thrive health.com okay anthony on the blood work thing there's things you can do before you get blood work that's one thing that's in the book and things you can do after you get the blood work. And that's another thing that can help protect you if you're somebody that is going into the doctor regularly to get the blood work mm -hmm. and you need, to, you need to have that information to help protect you so that you can recover faster. There's, without a doubt, so many people that are really sick and they get the blood work and they go backwards. And they don't know why, because no one's saying, uh oh, you know, you're going backwards in the last couple of weeks because of your blood, all the blood that was being drawn. But nobody can tell them. It just, they don't know this. And then they go and get more. And the worst part about all of it is the doctor will ask for more blood work drawn the sicker you get. And that has been the kiss of death for a lot of people who have been chronically sick. And the thing is, is they can get all they need out of a quarter vial of blood. But yes, if you if they say we need seven vials, then just do it, it. If this is and you can't get out of it for some reason, then just ask for seven quarter vials mm -hmm. in the end or seven half vials. Then you'll end up with just three full vials taken. And it helps, like every little bit helps. Yeah, as much as you can kind of lessen the, the load taken. Um, blood is precious. Blood is just precious. It I never a, thought about it as precious, our immune precious. system. And especially with most of us who are going to get blood work, we're dealing with some kind of immune issue that we're checking. We want to make sure what we're doing is working. Um, I like to get my blood work done three times a year just so that I can see where I'm at because I've had so yeah. many different health issues, but this is going to help me tremendously. I know it. Yeah. And you should, you should go to the doctor. You should get blood work. I am so pro blood work and I have been forever. It's just, there's some things people need to know to protect themselves. And guess what? There's people out there in the medical meme community that are asking their doctors and their doctors are like, sure, hmm. that's fine. We'll, we'll do half files. And sure, you can come in again if you want, like in a week, or you can do quarter vials, and or we can do pediatric 
vials. Ooh, I like we can that. Do, we can do baby vials, and that's fine. And there's people in the medical medium community that are like, I can't believe this. It's saving my life. It's changing my life. And, and they're becoming their own advocate. They're advocating for themselves, and they're, like, getting results from this information. And you can do that instead, but they can... They can get everything out of, believe it or not, insanely out of one tiny drop. Wow. Never mind quarter vials, but you can't, you're not, they're never going to do that. So you have to, you have to work with them and say, you know, quarter vials, but blood should be respected. It should be treated. All right, friends, hope that was helpful to you. I know it was helpful to me. I know I'm going to become an advocate when I go to get my blood work done from now on. In the meantime, come back tomorrow for part two. We're going to talk all about CT scans, MRIs, vaccines. Dwayne, what else did we talk about? We talked about so many things in this episode. The liver and how important the liver is. Eggs. Eggs. Oh, my gosh. Everything you need to know about eggs. My dad makes eggs every day. I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyway, take a listen. <laughs> In the meantime, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or mariamenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.